hello. Uh, this video is unscripted, so I'm wearing a suit so I don't appear as unhinged as I might otherwise. If this, um, I'm not trying to offend anyone, this has just been, it's been something that has been bothering me for the better part of two decades, and I just, I needed to get it off my chest. Nobody else seems to care about this particular subject, and I feel like I'm the only one who does, and it hurts. People who have interacted with me in real life have, at one point or another, had to deal with this rant. They treat me like I'm crazy. I probably am, but not for this. Not for being bothered by this, and I just... I remember watching Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood the day it first aired. I was ecstatic. Fullmetal Alchemist was one of my favorite series ever. I, had re I was up to date with the manga, I would seen the 2004 series, and I was just psyched. But then, the anime started and... <sighs> I felt betrayed. I felt betrayed by something that I love. <sighs> it wasn't because it started with a filler, or it, started by introducing Edward really badly and screwing up the beautiful introduction that he had in both the manga and the 2004 anime. No, it was because of something a little bit more minute. A detail that most probably wouldn't have been offended by, but I am, I'm not most people, and I was, I felt really, really attacked. It felt like a betrayal. It felt like the people who created this had come together to make something they knew I personally could not enjoy for whatever freaking reason, they decided to have Edward Elric's hair outlined in a darker, in, in brown instead of black, like every other thing in the show. And what made this worse, oh, what made this worse, was it was just him. He was the only thing, the only character with hair outlined in dark brown. Even the other characters who were blonde had hair outlined in black. Winry's hair, which is arguably lighter, that Edwards was outlined in black, and for the love of God, I couldn't. I couldn't. <sighs> when I'm watching a show, and some blonde chick comes in, and her face, her face is outlined in black, her body is outlined in black, but her freaking hair is outlined in brown, it... to like eloquently describe it but it irks me i just have to ask why you have to put literally more effort into making look something look like it doesn't work it doesn't belong in the universe that surrounds it why would you do this like it it pisses me off oh my god it angers me so much i'm okay with everything being outlined in a different color if if they're consistent about that like for example look at this Genie is outlined in a darker shade of blue. Aladdin's skin is a darker shade of his skin color. Jasmine's clothing is a darker shade of her pant color. And it works. It's consistent, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with everything being outlined in a different color if they consistently do that for everything. But when they have one item on screen that's outlined in a different color and everything else is outlined in black, it's the inconsistency that bothers me. I, I could not, for the life of me, find the Powerpuff Girl sheets that I own, but... Look at how Bubbles is all out if she, uh, somewhere. It's all outlines in black, but the little thing behind her is outlined in blue. That bothered me a lot as a kid. Oh, it's ringing. And shows that I probably would have enjoyed otherwise. I just every time I see that, it just makes me lose my mind. Like, Full Metal Panic, for example. I freaking love that show. It was great. It was amazing. And then they had that third season. And for the love of God, the white-haired general chick suddenly has beige outlines on her hair instead of black. But the rest of her is outlined. Full Metal or the so. I 
love lines. I love a nice, crisp, neat line. Line art is, mm, it's, but holy sh, like, mm, banana fish. I really, 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 really like that show. However, however, it was very difficult for me to continue watching it because visually, it looked like the pen they were using to ink Ash specifically was always low on ink. Like, it looked like his lines did not match the outlines for every other character in the show. And because he was the main character, and he was almost always on screen, that stood out to me more. And, like, did they visually think that looked better? I almost feel like having a, a like a shaky line would cost more to animate than having consistently like hard lines. So why would you put in the energy and money to make something or one character, only one character, and not do it for everybody else, but it doesn't add anything? It, it takes away from the scene rather than adding to it. Like, okay, before I encountered Legend of the Galactic Heroes, I was a huge fan of Code Yes. I was what the cool kids would call a Gias head. I had a poster of Lelouch, and that was about all the merch I had, because anime wasn't easily accessible in my region at the time. But regardless, I was a huge fan of that series. It was one of my favorites. It was my absolute favorite anime. But then... But... There are just some little things in it that freaking bother me. The episode in the second season, where they had that epic uh, chess match between Zero and Schneiser or whatever, how are you pronounce it? It's German. I don't, I can't German. When they're playing chess, there are flowers in the venue, and all of the flowers, oh my god, all of the flowers, instead of being outlined in black, like literally everything else in the scene, they were outlined in red. They were pink flowers outlined in red. Jesus Christ, that drove me up a wall. I could not pay attention to the intense chess happening on screen because those stupid flowers and that chip with the glasses, the, the, the hum table humping lady. Oh, what was her fucking name? Uh, what is her chip with pig tail? Mm, what is it? Table girl. You know who I'm talking about if you've seen the show. She had a flower on her dress and it she was standing behind Snizel, Snyder, Snipe, whatever, Lord Snizer, and her stupid flower thing was like in every single shot in that scene. And I could for the life of me could not pay attention to what was going on. I was too busy staring at her stupid flower for that wasn't outlined consistently with everything else. And when I had this rant with my friends they told me, oh, well, Melinda, you see, they didn't have the animation budget to outline them in black and also shade them, so they were trying to cheat. And okay, sure, let's, let's, let's go with that. Let's say the animators ran out of money and consistently couldn't outline these flowers properly and shade them and get the animation released at a sensible time. I get that. I get that. There are limitations when you have to release something weekly. I totally understand, but that, I don't like it, but I can excuse it in that context of deadlines. But when you have a character who is blonde or white haired and they make an executive decision, like anime isn't made by one person, numerous people have to come around and sit at a table and be like, yeah, this is a great idea. I agree, that's a really good idea. And a lot of people came around, they're like, yo, yo, this, this girl, she's blonde, right? But what if, what if we outlined her hair in a dark brown instead of black, but everything else on screen is outlined in black? Several people thought that was a good idea. It blows my mind, I'm losing my marbles. And like every rule, there are exceptions. I have seen some situations where everything's outlined in black except for a couple things and I make it work. For example, everything by Ufotable, I don't know how, how the studio does it, how they get away with it, but they have consistently managed to do things that I would normally find appalling and do them well enough that I can accept it. 
hell, they had a CGI character in 2012-ish, and they made it work. So Uthotable, Uthotable is beyond reasoning with there, beyond mortal man's logic. They somehow get a free pass. And there were some situations where things are glowing that I, I give them a free pass. Like I was playing Hollow Knight and everything's outlined in black except for like the, the orange radiance. And until I figured out that that was like the radiance and it was supposed to be glowing, that drove me up a wall. With like the characters that had the eyes and the eyes were outlined in the uh, really dark orange and then the eyes themselves were orange and everything else on the screen was outlined in black. That bothered me. But then when I realized it was supposed to be glowing, it kind of, it, it, it made sense, both aesthetically and, like, thematically. It had a legitimate reason, therefore, I'm not saying that they get away with it, they do it in such a way that it works. But these anime girls, yo, these anime girls with their silver hair that's outlined in gray, they do not make it work. I, the argument I've seen is that Oh, they got really light hair, and their hair is transparent. If their hair is transparent, you'd be able to see through the hair. Or it's the lighting getting it. They want to go for realism. If I wanted realism, I'd be watching a Holocaust movie, not anime. And, and let's and let's be real. If if anyone's hair is going to be reflecting the sun, it's not going to be some beach blonde or some silver-headed fox or whatever. It's going to be somebody with dark hair. Black attracts light, therefore reflects more light because it bounces. That's how the sun works. So if anybody's hair was outlined in a lighter color for realism, it'd be somebody with darker hair. So don't play that bullshit with me. When I was a, uh, a smaller version of myself, I remember Look, when I was a smaller version of myself, I had Powerpuff Girl sheets. See, I loved the Powerpuff Girls. That was like my favorite TV show in the world. I thought it was great. I, I loved it. However, and so um, for one of my birthdays, I think it was my fifth birthday, I was given a Powerpuff Girl bedding. And with the bedding, it was like these purple sheets, but there was also a big fleece Powerpuff Girl uh, blanket that had blossom bubbles and buttercup poofing out their little, like, uh, just flying around on it. That blanket, I think, caused a lot of my... I, I think that blanket has a lot to do with the way I am today. I looked through the closet. I, for the life of me, could not find the blanket. But if you saw it, you would understand why I am so, so adamantly upset about this. But I remember, like, just imagine being five years old, you're in your bed, you're all nice and tight and snug, and you look down, and you got the three Powerpuff Girls on you, you got like literal Cartoon Network icons just covering you in warmth. And Blossom, Blossom's outlines and the same, and every like Bubbles and Buttercup were outlined in black as they should be consistently, and then Blossom, the pink on her outfit was outlined in a darker pink because there was a giant heart in the background that was like a really dark pink. So I think that when they were like manufacturing this blanket, they decided to use that dark pink for the outlines of Blossom instead of using more black ink. I guess it was less expensive. That's the only explanation I can think of for this graphically appalling sight that I had to look down at as a wee lass trying to go to sleep. And, good God. It's like, I remember waking up in the middle of the night, looking down at this blanket and sobbing. And ever since, I think, I think that was the early childhood trauma that like screwed me up. If I'm being entirely like realistic about this, that was my pivotal moment. If um, if Sigmund Freud were sitting there, he'd be like, "Yo, that was your uh, I want to I want to bang my mom moment." I oh god, it's been a while since I took a psychology course. <laughs>